Yes, in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. There is welcome for the sinner and a promise grace made good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds of great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper room of bliss. Hello. Welcome to worship for February the 20th from Prince of Peace Church in La Crescent, Minnesota. I am Pastor Anna Sorensen, and I am serving here as interim associate pastor. It's a mouthful, but it simply means that um, I'm on a part-time assignment. Welcome to worship. If you turn the page on your calendar, you will see that the season of Lent begins just at the beginning of March. Our Lenten theme at Prince of Peace is full to the brim. And I want to let you know about some of the opportunities for you in this Lenten season. Wednesday worship live online will happen at 8 a.m., but we're going to start that this week so we can kind of ease into it and check out the technology. It's going to be on Facebook and YouTube, and it's about a 15-minute service with scripture and prayer and a chance to interact with one another. Lent itself begins on March the 2nd with an in-person Ash Wednesday service at 6.30 p.m. with the theme, All That You Are. And that service will include imposition of ashes, scripture, prayer, and a fire ritual of release. That service is only going to be in person. There will be no online um, equivalent. Also for Lent, you can sign up for a faith box if your family would like to have Lenten faith building activities delivered to your home. You can email Kendra, our director of faith formation. You can sign up in the church narthex and we also need a few more delivery drivers who will be willing to make about an hour's worth of deliveries, and you can do that at your convenience. Let Kendra know if you're willing. This week, we ask you to pray for a few people in this community. Please hold Vicki Otto in your prayers as she is recovering from surgery. Uh, she is currently in Arizona. And also hold Helen Munson in your prayers as she continues to be hospitalized. I invite you to ground your feet into the floor, or if you're sitting, feel the chair supporting you. Take a deep breath and allow yourself a few moments of silence as we prepare ourselves for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who created us, redeemed us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin before God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and against your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word 
when it made us confront things within ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you have called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us so that we may rest in the presence of your Son. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted in the household of Christ, an inheritor of eternal life. Live as a freed and forgiven child of God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. There are two scripture readings today. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 45. I'll be reading verses 3 through 11 and 15. This reading drops us towards the end of a story that is many, many chapters long, a story about Joseph and his brothers. Jacob had 12 sons. One of them, Joseph, was Jacob's favorite, and his ten older brothers really resented him for his father's favoritism. And so they took Joseph, they threw him into a pit, and then when traders came by, they sold their little brother into slavery. Those traders sold Joseph in Egypt. But Joseph was not alone in Egypt. God was with him, and through God's presence and Joseph's own wits and his talents, he rose in Egypt to become the second most powerful man in the kingdom. Then famine struck, and Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to find food. And the man they came before to seek food was Joseph. The next part of the story reads a bit like a soap opera. The brothers come and go before Joseph several times, and they do not know who he is. And now we pick up the story in chapter 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Is my father really still alive? His brothers couldn't respond because they were terrified before him. Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they moved closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold to Egypt. Now don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves that you sold me here. Actually, God sent me before you to save lives. We've already had two years of famine in the land, and there are five years left without planting or harvesting. God sent me before you to make sure that you would survive and to rescue your lives in this amazing way. You didn't send me here. It was God who made me a father to Pharaoh and master of his entire household and ruler of the whole land of Egypt. Hurry, go back and tell your father. Tell him that this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me master of all Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You may live in the land of Goshen so that you will be near me. 
your children and your grandchildren and your flocks, your herds and everyone with you. I will support you there, so you, your household, and everyone with you will not starve, for the famine will last still for five years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel from Luke, chapter 6, beginning at verse 27. Jesus said, I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks, and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people the same way that you want them to treat you. This is the gospel of the Lord. I would like you to imagine that you have wronged someone very close to you, grievously wronged someone. Maybe you, as is the case for me, don't even have to imagine. I can remember a wrong. I sinned against a sibling in Christ, cruelty of the worst kind. I failed to honor the image of God in a fellow human. Now in this state of having grievously harmed someone else, you hear words from their mouth, words of forgiveness, words that you do not deserve, words that are unearned. This is mercy. Now I want you to hold on to this sense of forgiveness, the sense of mercy for a minute. While we talk about discernment. That's our spiritual practice for the month of February. Discerning God's will requires a sense of God's guidance, of God's providence. Now, providence, that's not a word that we use a lot in the Lutheran Church, but it simply means that God continues to work in our lives, no matter the circumstances, guiding and shaping us. Now, there's a lot of voices in our culture that teach us, especially teach our young people, that they have to find their one thing, their one purpose, their one true self, and that they have to aim everything in their lives at that one thing. That's why we parents of adolescents run around frantically taking our kids to all of these activities. Because what if my kid's one true thing is hockey, but I'm the one who said no hockey in our family? I used to think this way. When I was a young adult, I was about ready to graduate from college. I knew that I was going to become a pastor and I was getting ready to head to seminary to study to become a pastor. I had two offers of admission, and I couldn't decide which to accept. I was really worried. What if I picked the wrong school and ended up going the wrong way in life because I wasn't correctly able to discern God's will? This was black and white thinking. This idea that there was only one way that God could work in me and only one correct choice. And thinking this way left me anxious and even unable to make a decision. So I went to my advisor and I asked for help. So after listening to me and some time in prayer, in his wisdom, Dr. Paul said, there is no wrong choice here. Either decision you will make will be one where you can learn and grow, and God will work with you at either school. It was such a word of grace to me. 
God would be with me no matter what choice I made. God says there are many ways for me to be at work in your life. Wherever you are, I can use that, God says. Whatever you choose, I will love you. I will forgive you. I will guide you, God says. God can work in the midst of multiple life choices. But God also works in us and through us in the midst of challenging circumstances, in the midst of grieving, in the midst of pain. And actually, not only does God can work in the midst of these, at the heart of our faith is the message that God's best work happens when there's suffering. The best of all of God's gifts happened in the grave. When the stone was rolled away and Christ was raised to show us that there is no place that God cannot work, in our life and even in our death. What does it look like when God works in those not-so-positive places. Well, I called my friend, the friend I had grievously wronged. I said, I am sorry, I am so sorry. His reply was, I have already forgiven you, Anna. Now, please understand, that friendship was still broken. I have not spoken to him again, but I no longer carry the burden of guilt. Only the amazement at my friend's faith, who lived into the words of Jesus in today's gospel. I grew in understanding the depth of God's mercy, shown through God's faithful child. Was not God at work in the midst of the pain that I caused? and maybe even because of that pain. It also looks like Scarlett Lewis. Her son, Jesse, was killed at Sandy Hook Elementary in 2012. And she chose forgiveness. She went on to write a book entitled Nurturing, Healing, Love. The title was based on a note that her son had written. And she founded the Jesse Lewis Choose Love movement, which creates a safer, more loving community. God can bring life from the grave. And God brings about a better world through the pain of losing a child to violence. And it looks like Joseph at the end of the book of Genesis, hated by his brothers, sold into slavery by his own family. But in the midst of tragedy, God was with him. And then those same brothers, when they came before him decades later, in need, and they discover that their brother is now in a position to pronounce an effective death sentence over them. He could have sent them home to famine-ridden Canaan with no assistance, but instead his words to them are words of welcome. What is mine is yours. And at the very end of that story in Genesis 50, when their father Jacob had died, Joseph's brothers approach him once more, and they fall down at his feet. And listen to the story at the very end. The brothers say, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I God? You planned something bad for me. But God produced something good from it in order to save the lives of many people, just as he is doing today. These words of Joseph are mercy. They are grace. They are forgiveness to his brothers. They are, as Jesus' instructions in that gospel reading, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Those words are also Joseph's testimony. They are Joseph's testimony about the power of God in his life, 
Whatever the evil and death-dealing intentions that his brothers had toward him, God continued to act in Joseph's life. Now please understand that this kind of testimony can only ever be made in the first person. It is a cruel, it is cruel, and it is a misunderstanding of Jesus' words to proclaim this unto others as how they should feel. It's a sin to use Jesus' words to tell someone who is suffering abuse that God is present in the abuse. It is very unkind to pronounce to a grieving parent that God is about to do something good with their pain. Joseph's brothers could only beg forgiveness. They could not tell Joseph how to respond. However, this is a testimony of faith that we seek for ourselves. You've probably seen a popular poem about footprints in the sand. It's from the perspective of a man at the end of his life looking back along a path walked. And Jesus is with him and he says, Jesus, I know you promised to be with me my whole life, but look, the times that were the hardest, there's only one set of footprints. Why weren't you there? And that poem ends. Jesus whispered, my precious child, I loved you. I will never leave you, never ever during your trials and testings. When you only saw one set of footprints, it was then I carried you. This is the providence of God. That God is relentlessly pursuing mercy, relentlessly pursuing life, and invites us always to do the same. The loneliest times are still lonely. The grief times are still filled with grief. And the suffering times, sometimes we still feel that we are in it without God. It's often in retrospect and only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to name those silver linings, the way that God was present even in tears, how, God's, how the trials drew us into God's presence. This is the gospel, that whatever you are living, whether it be joy or sorrow, whether it be decision-making or grieving, God will be with you. God will be with you in the pain and can redeem it and can wrest some good out of it. Whenever you are feeling as if you are doing it alone, it is a testimony of faith that says no. God goes with us, even into the valley of the shadow of death. Because even death is a place where God's mercy is shown, especially death. That's where God does his best work. So I pray that you will be able to say, along with Joseph, there was evil and sorrow in this, but God was there, and God was able to use it for good. Amen. O oh God of mercy, God of light, in love and mercy, as ever in your sight to live our lives in you in sickness, sorrow, want or care may we each other 
of God is with us. And so we pray for the church, for the world, and for all that God made. You teach us to love our neighbors and our enemies. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it's risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have received mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy, that we delight with you in an abundance of peace. Protect all those whose lives are harmed by war or unrest and especially we pray for the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy, O oh God. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal suffering bodies. Strengthen all those whose spirits are troubled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one body, the body of Christ. Teach us to forgive one another and to accept forgiveness. Help us resolve conflicts with listening and patience. Be with those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift all these prayers to you in confidence and in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the time of the offering in, in worship, we have started offering stories, stories of how God is at work through this congregation. I see God at work when the preschool students come running down the hallway, laughing, joy on their faces. Sometimes there's so much joy that they forget to watch where they're going and they bounce off the walls like ping pong balls. Thank you for your financial support that helps keep a well-maintained building and clean bathrooms, a ministry to the families of our community. If you'd like to make a financial gift to Prince of Peace, you can send a check to the church office, or you can click on the link that's in the worship bulletin that goes with this service. And again, thank you. And now hear a blessing. May God, who was with Joseph in Egypt and gave him tears of joy rather than a hardened heart when he was reunited with his family, may God surround your day with dreams, with worthy work and reconciliation. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you give the great commission 
heal the sick and preach the word, lest the church neglect its mission for the gospel to go unheard. Help us witness for your purpose with remotely dignity, with the Spirit's gift in power us for the work of ministry. Lord, you bless with words assuring, I am with you to the end. Faith and hope as love restoring, may we serve you as you intend. And amid the cares that claim history.